Hello and welcome to Good Deeds. I'm your host Keith Erickson and our guest is Norfolk County Register of Deeds Bill O'Donnell. He's the 11th Register of Deeds down there in Norfolk County. Bill, welcome to the show again. Keith, thanks very much. Thanks for having me and thanks to Wes Ray, your general manager and your staff here at uh, Braintree Community Access. Uh, it, it's great uh, that you do this show. You know, uh, the biggest asset I always say is our homes for most of us. So it's great to throw some statistics out and tell them a little bit, uh, hopefully present some information people find helpful. Have if this is the fourth quarter, so uh, how a how was your holiday? Let's just do a little yeah. reminiscing here for Holidays just thirty were seconds. Great, family yeah. was great. Uh, it was still good. Going, still, still going on. Uh, right. Getting, getting going for the second semester, and uh, <laughs> and, and that brings us to a new year. So right. uh, what we thought was uh, we, we'd give some statistics for the year, mm -hmm. year to year, see where we were. Yeah. And I guess what I would say is the real estate activity in Norfolk County has had sort of mixed results. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have strong communities like Braintree, and I think countywide. Uh, it's pretty strong, but document volume uh, was down. Total documents recorded in 2017 countywide were 152,927, as opposed to 2018, January to December, 141,159. That's down 8%. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, uh, in Quincy, total, do I mean, Braintree, yeah. uh, don't, oh, you're going to get me in trouble with the Adamses and all that. Um, but in Braintree, Total documents recorded in 2017 was 7,032 to 6,472 in 2018, and that was down uh, 8%. So um, Norfolk County and Braintree sort of mirrored each other. That total, document, total document volume was down again. Mm -hmm. um, activity has been a little sluggish at times, mm -hmm. yet um, antidotally uh, prices are prices up. Prices are going right. And, right. and, and it kind of ties into deeds. When I looked at uh, the deed transactions, mm -hmm. Um, the county uh, held their own uh, in Norfolk County. Total deeds recorded in 2017 were 18,533, and in 2018, 18,124, so down 2%. But in Braintree, uh, it was 977 deeds recorded in 2017 from January 1st to December 31st and 980 this year, so about the same. So I think it reflects that, you know, Braintree certainly uh, exceeded the county mm -hmm. as far as uh, sales and deeds being recorded, because I, and I think it's a, a desirable place to live. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the mayor and the council, the governments are, uh, run well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so clearly other communities haven't done as well as um, uh, Braintree, mm -hmm. and it, it's reflected in the deeds. I would point out for sale price, which is very interesting, um, and again, we track residential and commercial, so right. it does get yeah. skewed. Right. It does bit. get yeah. skewed. Yeah. But uh, countywide in 2017, it was $691,011 versus 2018, $841,000. $414, or almost a $151,000 increase, or 22%. Now, that word, just reiterate, that's the average sales price. Average sales, sales price, price right? commercial yep. and residential. Yep. Yep. And Braintree exceeded that number. The average uh, sale price in 2017 was $510,538, and in 2018, it was $632,000. Uh, $632, uh, for roughly 122,000, almost 123,000 dollar increase, or up 24 percent, mm -hmm. and so anecdotally um, at the registry, when people are doing closings, we're hearing that from the brokers. They're saying mm -hmm. there, at least in 2018, there wasn't enough inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, at times, they had uh, multiple um, parties bidding on yeah. houses, so it's reflective in the sale price. So even though the document volume might be down, even though sales, or at least countywide, were down 2%, mm -hmm. there's, there, there, there wasn't enough inventory. There was more and more people competing. Did you see over the 2018 season, or the 2018 year, I should say? I like the season. Season, <laughs> I like the season. It's always sports related. Sports related. Um, did you see like the drop off happen in the third quarter, fourth quarter, or where where was the where was the line? And it it can was. You, can you it, kind of like is it up and down? It it, it, it was certainly in the fourth quarter. It it, it typically drops off, yeah. but it was sort of a steady kind of increase. Mm -hmm. Typically. Um, you know, although uh, some of the sale prices uh, were still there even in November and December. So, um, and uh, who knows what 2019 brings, but traditionally, you know, January and February aren't big sale months and even March. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so the spring season, uh, that remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about mortgages, again, I think it's reflecting that it was down countywide and it was down here in Braintree. Uh, mm -hmm. Countywide, 
uh, in mortgages or borrowings, uh, which right. is in, indicative of, of a need to you know uh, buy things, a need uh, you know to get involved in the real estate market. Mm -hmm. Uh, in 2017, countywide, there was 27,563 mortgages, and in 2018, it was 24,503. So that was down uh, 3,060, or down 11%. Mm -hmm. Braintree exceeded that number, but it was still down. There was 1,458 uh, mortgages or borrowings in 2017 um, versus 1,323 in 2018, and that's down uh, 9%. And again, a Braintree exceeded the county, so right. you know here in Braintree you're, you're doing better mm -hmm. uh, than than countywide. But I think it's reflective of what we just talked about. There were less items that were being sold. There was less inventory uh, that was out there for the brokers to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's an uneasiness economically. Uh, uh, you know, some people. You know, even though um, employment numbers are good, you know, maybe people are still you know yeah. uh, not too sure on, on on where they stand economically. Mm -hmm. And there was a rise in interest rates, even though it just dipped down recently. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Federal Reserve did increase interest rates, and it remains to be seen what they're going to do in 2019. They're talking about, in, you know, rising, mm -hmm. increasing the interest mm -hmm. rates. And so, what does that mean? Well, if you've refinanced in uh, some years ago, say for instance in, in 2012, um, there were 10-year uh, uh, mortgages going for 2.75. Um, if you've refinanced and you have a low rate. You know, you you might not want to be borrowing now right. at a higher rate. Right. What would you say 2019 going forward? As we're always looking ahead, you know, first-time home buyers. How is this? Do you think affecting them? Do they do the research and do they see these numbers and be like, whoa, wait a second here. What 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 are my options? You know. Yeah. Well, I think the a, a lot of options. Uh, it's it's tougher for for the the newer people that are trying to jump in the market because mm -hmm. the prices are high. Mm -hmm. uh, but you want to get in the market. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, I'm from Norwood, Braintree. I, I see a lot of similarities between Braintree and Norwood. We have a light company, you have a light company. Mm -hmm. They're desirable places, and there are a lot of people that want to stay in the town they grew up. You don't have that in every community. Mm -hmm. So I think that makes it, you know, tougher. I think it's tougher countywide for newer people to, to get into the market, mm -hmm. but especially in, in communities like Braintree and Norwood, where, you know, people want to stay in the town they grew up. Um, but the interest rates still are relatively low. I mean, you, you hit, right. sure. the, my oh, first yeah. interest rate when we I bought a, a, a condominium <laughs> in 1987, it was an 8% adjustable. Mm -hmm. and, and other people who probably borrowed um, earlier had, you know, interest rates at 18%, yeah, you know, uh, so yeah. it's all relative. So when I, I hear younger people go, oh, I'm waiting for the interest rates to go down, right. you know, maybe they'll go down, but you know, the trend is clicking up and still, you know, even a 30% uh, 30-year mortgage at 4% or 4 and a quarter is it's easy money. It's it's it, it's uh, generationally these rates have been low, right. and and mm -hmm. um, you know so you know that shouldn't prohibit people from getting in. I think what's prohibiting, what's making it tough is is the actual price. Right, right, right. So we we're, we're, we're um, I have so many sheets of paper and so many questions to ask. But what foreclosure activity? Th that's a good thing to, I mean, to it's a point nice transition. out. Yeah, so let's uh, talk a little bit about that from. No matter how great the communities are, and there are 28 you know, communities here in Norfolk County, and Braintree's a great community, there's always somebody struggling with mm -hmm. foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And if, that, if there's one person struggling with foreclosure, that's probably one person too many. Right. But just to give you an idea, foreclosure deeds, that's the end of the process. That's, uh, we see deeds get recorded. That it means a lender, because someone wasn't paying the mortgage, uh, you know, went through the whole process and foreclosed, and there was a deed recorded. In 2017, it was 268 foreclosure deeds, mm -hmm. and in 2018, countywide, it was 221, uh, which is a net down 47 or down 18%. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the end of the process. Um, the relatively good news in, in um, Braintree is that in 2018, there was only 10 foreclosure yes. deeds. Yeah. And again, at the registry, we're, our only involvement is sort of at the end when a recording comes mm -hmm. and there's a foreclosure deed, but also at the beginning. Mm -hmm. By law, when a lender is uh, foreclosing on someone, when they go to court, the court tells them they have to file a notice to foreclose at the Registry of Deeds where the property's at. So we've been tracking that. Mm -hmm. And again, it's the first step in the process. In 2018, there was uh, 621 notices to foreclose. It's the first step in the process. Mm -hmm. Versus um, 2017, there was 687. 
then that's almost down 11 percent. And again, in Braintree in 2018, there, there was 27 notices to foreclose versus um, in 2017, uh, 32. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is um, go to our website, um, www.norfolkdeeds.org, because we have partnered up with nonprofit groups that help people, and, and, and you, you can never get this information out to people. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a foreclosure notice, get on it right away. These groups are nonprofit. It's the Quincy Community Action Program in your neighboring uh, town here, mm -hmm. the city of Quincy, and also Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts. Um, again, two nonprofit groups that not only help people through the process, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a legal process, right, right. but they also help people. They have financial literacy classes. They look at the overall, what you're spending. Um, they have that tough conversation. If you can't stay in the house, what you might want to do to transition so you get mm -hmm. housing um, and, and take care of uh, you know the family needs as far as getting a, a, a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, on our website, we have a link to the Attorney General's office okay. that also has resources available. Bill, so, um, just name those two other, the, the two uh, nonprofits that you mentioned. Yes. So we, we, I mean, we say it so quickly that sometimes sure. people have a hard and time. And that's why I refer yeah. to our website. There, sure. We have the contact information yeah. in there, but it's the mm -hmm. Quincy Community Action Program. Okay and uh, Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts out of Brockton, their main office, but they take care of the whole county. And mm -hmm. Quincy Community Action Program mm -hmm. uh, commits to helping everybody in the county uh, with, when, with, with people struggling with foreclosure. He's Bill O'Donnell. He's the Register of Deeds right down there in Norfolk County. We're asking him lots of questions here on good deeds. And uh, hey, point number four, electronic recording. At the Register of Deeds, you guys are into the, you, I mean, you've actually really piloted trying to transition from the old pen and ink to digital and trying to get everybody on board, I think, right? Isn't and that it's true? been a great process. Uh, you know, when I got there, you know, there was, there was no, nothing on, the, no right. internet land record research. That's something we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. And we have over now over 8 million images. Everything's been recorded back, uh, not only recorded, but scanned in, and it's available on the internet, mm -hmm. again, at www.norfolkdeeds.org mm -hmm. that you can view. But technology is changing so quickly. Uh, there was a concept when, when I first became registered, no one ever heard of electronic recording. Mm -hmm. What that is, you can now record remotely. So an attorney here in uh, Braintree, you know, yeah, uh, could, could be doing a closing at their office and then transmit the documents electronically uh, to be recorded at the registry. And, you know, it, it didn't just happen. There had to be um, federal uh, approvals, mm -hmm. state approvals, and uh, we've been doing it on the recorded land side for an, uh, a while now, um, and about 45% uh, of the documents now are re recorded electronically. Again, the institutional users of the registry, whether they're the law firms, the title uh, companies, uh, the lenders, they saw a benefit. It, it really is, there's a cost savings, there's an efficiency. We miss people coming to 649 <laughs> High Street. I welcome people coming in. But you mentioned a pilot program. Uh, in 2017, um, again, I, I got to thank your, your uh, local legislators. You had Representative mm -hmm. Cusack, Senator Timothy, Governor Baker signed a law um, th that um, allowed uh, us to uh, do electronic recording on the land court side. So in Norfolk County, 80% uh, of the property is recorded land. Uh, we've been doing electronic recording for a while. We're up to 45% electronic recording there. Um, but since 2017, um, we're like a pilot program for the state. Uh, state, not every uh, there's 21 registry districts across mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Not everyone is doing electronic recording on the land court, mm -hmm. and it's grown. We're up to about 25 percent, and again, uh, you know, of mm -hmm. the document volume on the land court being electronic recording, mm -hmm. and uh, we're mm -hmm. getting you know good feedback from the people that are using it, and uh, so far it's been pretty mm -hmm. seamless. So, uh, if you have any more numbers for the real estate activity that you want to share. I mean, there's. I mean, we got other things to talk about. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he numbers. has a cheat sheet over there. He looks like Andy Reid of the yeah, Kansas yeah, yeah, City yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah. Reed, Reed. I prefer Josh McDaniels. Oh, okay, Josh McDaniels. <laughs> All right, fine. Okay, um, but you know, um, uh, just overall, I mean, you compare like uh, if you can, you know, 2017 in 2018. I mean, do you see an overall trend? I mean, where it, do you? The document volume has been. Go That's what troubles me. Is each year right. for a number of years now, the document volume has been going down, mm -hmm. but we see tremendous competition 
um, for, price, for, for homes because mm -hmm. there's, there's not enough inventory. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big question for 2019. Right. And, and maybe the brokers won't really get a sense of it uh, until 2019. At the end of 2018, there seemed to be the inventory of homes was building, that there were, were, were homes to be sold, that you didn't have this you know, sparse, sparseness which mm -hmm. creates the demand, which creates the increased price. Right. So 2019, it remains to be seen, and I think that you know, we'll see in the spring. You know, mm -hmm. does, right. we'll does get those numbers. Do, yeah. yeah, get the numbers and do, you know, see if you know there are more uh, houses to be sold. Mm -hmm. And again, it just also depends economically. If people are confident in the economy, they'll they'll mm -hmm. they'll they'll buy. Right, right. Let's move on to the the Homestead Act. I know this is another one of those uh, pet projects of yours that you were trying to just get the word out for the Homestead Act, trying to help people, uh, you know, get a little more assurance for their home and if something happens. And the reason I do it, look, my parents uh, bought in Norwood in 1960. They could have recorded a homestead, never did. It's yeah. always been part of the statute, right. um, but people just never knew about it. And we try to tell people, hey, make sure you take advantage of it. Again, well, I gotta be honest, before the, I started talking to you on this show, I didn't know what a Homestead Act was. I don't, I don't know, if you asked 10 people on the street, would, would they know? No, probably no. not, and I think more and more people with the internet, more and more people educate themselves on things like this. Mm -hmm. um, but the Homestead was written into the state statute, and it, it really ba prevents a forced sale of your home. Mm -hmm. Um, again, if you don't pay you know, your taxes to Braintree, they can take it by tax title. If you don't pay your lender, as we talked about, they can foreclose. Mm -hmm. I always give the example that uh, people drive their car. They might think they have a lot of insurance on their car, 100000 but they hit somebody and there's a $300,000 case against them. Well, the insurance company might turn over that hundred, mm -hmm. but they're going to chase you. And they're still going to chase you even though you have a homestead recorded. Mm -hmm. However, the homestead says you can't force the sale of the home. And it's always being looked at. Um, you know, again, thank you, local legislators. Um, they've put things in the statute, like if you have a homestead and you, ha and you sell your house, the creditors can't swoop in and take the proceeds of the house, again, for a limited period of time, for mm -hmm. one year. Or if your house burnt down and the insurance company gives you a check to rebuild, mm -hmm. creditors can't come in and swoop in and get that money, mm -hmm. again, for a limited period of time, if you have a homestead recorded at the registry. How um, simple is the years. process? It's a, a, a relatively simple, it's a one or two page document. Uh, when we are at office hours, and in fact, we're gonna be in office hours in Braintree uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. um, look for us at office hours. Uh, you, all you need is a, a, a deed to, you know, what, what, what the deed number is. So right. like we'd look up Keith Erickson. Oh, mm -hmm. the deed to your house is book and page. You put the book and page. And you make a couple of representations. First of all, if you own the property. Yeah, do uh, I need to bring something down to the Registry of Deeds before, like, for this to actually happen? Do I need a certain piece of paper? No, you could, just you could just come by the Registry of Deeds or come okay. by at one of our office hours or when we're at the uh, senior center or at some of the civic groups we talk mm -hmm. to. We'll give you um, the deed information, the book and page. Mm -hmm. You put it down on the document. If you own the property with whoever, if it's mm -hmm. your spouse, you and your spouse have to be there. Oh, I see. You okay. have to sign it in front of a notary, so you have yep. to bring licenses to show who you are. I see. And the filing fee is relatively modest, $36. Right? Yeah. And uh, it gives you the protection. And when I first became registered, it was 300000 mm -hmm. It's been increased to 500000 They talk about They're talking about increasing it some more. Mm -hmm. But for all intents and purposes, you know, um, you know, some houses are worth more than that. You don't see the judges in court, you know, they're not like splitting the house in half. They recognize that the intent of the law is to keep people in their homes, and, and that's a good protection to have. And, um, the, and it's been extended. I mean, if people have uh, mobile homes, they can now put homesteads on and record it at the registry. So there's, there's a lot of things that your local legislators have done that give consumers uh, protection. Uh, and they define elderly, the state legislature, as 62 and above. Right. So, um, you know, if, if uh, you and your spouse are over 62, um, we just do one document, but you each kind of get a $500,000 protection mm -hmm. uh, at the Norfolk Registry, you know, one document, one fee, uh, but each of you get protection. So um, there's, it, it's, a stat, it's in the statute. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it, mm -hmm. but really, again, consult your biggest an, asset is your home. Consult an attorney before you make any moves. You can. I, hey, look, yeah. I'm a member of the Bar Association. Mm -hmm. I you know, don't want to take business away from a, a, an attorney, but it, it's, it's something that you can, you can also, you know, you can also sure. come in and do.
Uh, let's talk a little bit about the consumer notification service that you guys do. Um, yes, that that is something we again we try to you know do things. Uh, and, and again, when I say we, we've been talking sports, you know, there's no <laughs> I in team. I have a good staff, and we're one of the first registries here in Massachusetts to do a consumer notification uh, service. You can go on our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org, and you can click on and, and just sign up for it. Well, right. what is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I know what it is, but you let's get, get it out yeah. there to other people. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I'll use myself. I sure. signed up. I, so if something named something, uh, William O'Donnell, some document comes through, even when we go in the back and we start recording, you know, reviewing the indexes and working on it, any time uh, something named William O'Donnell is touched, I get an email. Mm. And I look it up. I just got one the other day. It was William C. O'Donnell. Well, I'm William P. O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. I look it up. Hey, doesn't involve me. We're fine. Why would I want to sign up? There may be a time I get that email notification, and again, I'm, you know, I can look it up on the computer, but if you can't, you call our customer service center. They'll, they'll look up the information for you or come mm -hmm. to one of our office hours. Sure. But if they're gonna, there's gonna be a time I might get that and say, wait a minute, that deed isn't my deed. Wait a minute, th th no, that's my deed, but I didn't sign it. Yeah. That's a mortgage on my house. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign that mortgage. Because the FBI says that one of the fastest growing white collar crimes is property and mortgage fraud. So we're not going to prevent the fraud. I want to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. But if I get that email and I see that, hey, wait a minute, that involves my property, I can start doing some due diligence and get on it right away, right. contact the law enforcement agencies here in the county, and we have links on our website uh, to the various uh, law sure. enforcement agencies. Sure you know, get some advice to counsel and get on it right away. So the Consumer Notification Service, mm -hmm. I haven't seen fraud in Norfolk County, mm -hmm. but I've heard about it from colleagues out in California, mm -hmm. out in um, Illinois. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. It, it, it's coming. You know, it's going to be around. You see all the scams that are going on around the county as it is, mm -hmm. even in real estate. We have deed scams. We have things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, we're, it's out there, sure. and it's unfortunate. Right. You know, uh, from my days when I was an assistant district attorney, mm -hmm. it's unfortunate what other people do to other people as mm -hmm. far as scams. But at least the consumer notification service would be a, just an added layer of um, getting notified of something. Yes, yeah. you're not going to prevent yeah. the fraud, mm -hmm. but but you know, again, the biggest asset is your home, mm -hmm. and you know, people don't check their title you know they don't check the registry every day sure. to see what's going on so this is a way of using the technology mm -hmm. and trying to be relevant in a, in a modern world and I got 54 Braintree residents who've signed up for the program yes so, hey, yeah the, know, we have, we've know. had 900 over 900 countywide sign and you have 54 Braintree residents that's pretty good up. that's yeah. not bad no, hey. and, and, well thanks to Keep thanks coming, to shows right? like right hey, believe me thanks to shows <laughs> like yours because you, you know you got to get the word out we are talking with uh, Bill O'Donnell he is the registrar at these down there in Dedham and uh, uh, one of your things that I actually really, really enjoyed was the Notable Land Records Project and uh, the, the, the booklet that you guys all put out. I read it cover to cover. <laughs> I was on the tee a few days, you know, just reading <laughs> yeah. it and seeing what famous people were, were uh, you know, who had, you know, put... Um, you know, deeds down in uh, here in Red. I thought it was really yeah. cool. So explain to people, I'm not doing a very good job of introducing it, but just explain to people what it was well, and how it's based on the 225th uh, you birthday. You know, for years, I love history, but yeah. you know, hey, the, the, the principal function of the registry is the real estate economy. Make sure the records are accessible and, and uh, available and they're secure. People rely on it for the economy, for mm -hmm. the real estate economy, for houses being sold, or commercial developments being taken place. But you know, there's a lot of history here in Norfolk County. So over the years, I was, you know, looking up the deeds, you know, look, you know, and, and try to put this project together. But in our 225th year, which was last, you know, it's 2018, mm -hmm. it all came together. Uh, we had finished the transcription project, which means all the handwritten documents were transcribed, and it really made history come alive. And, and so what we try to do is, you know, tie a deed to a person, you know, uh, General Thayer, you know, uh, was here in Braintree. We, we have four presidents born in Norfolk County. There was, um, uh, you know, people from My favorite history. was Grizzly, Grizzly Adams. Grizzly Adams Come uh, on, had I mean, property Grizzly from Adams Medway. has a deed here uh, and, in and, Norfolk and, County. And, uh, one of yeah. my favorites is actually only, and I bring it up, I, 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 I still try to run, but at the yeah. Falmouth Road Race, uh, I met Sunita Williams, who was an astronaut, right. and her, her yeah. family was in Needham. Mm -hmm. um, you have Helen Keller in, in, in 
know, rent them. So tremendous history in Norfolk County. So we, we, that was uh, the 225th anniversary celebrated the whole county. But the notable uh, book, the book, and it's, it's around if people want it, um, it has uh, picked a deed, uh, tied deeds in. But there was Nobel um, Prize winners. Uh, Second uh, phase is underway? Uh, we're, we're underway. It won't be as elaborate as the first, but we, we are try, we're trying to go okay. through each person, um, you know, pick a... Uh, another person from each community and tie it into a record and, and uh, yes, yeah. so volume two is being worked on. And down the line, uh, we, we have a letter going out. I'd, I'd like to do one that's oriented to the, the, the veterans, like, oh, you, you know, uh, nice. you know, right yeah. to the veterans agents. Hey, give us, you know, some over history, see if we can tie it into a deed. Mm -hmm. And also, you mentioned sports, go to sports <laughs> one. And so I had all these ideas in my that's, head. That's but, really uh, cool. You know, uh, so you, obviously, you, you're trying to do as much outreach as you possibly can down there at the Registry of Deeds. You have your computer seminars, uh, Suits for Success, the New Life Furniture Bank of Massachusetts as well. Can you kind of expand on those in the last well, couple minutes? Sure. Uh, as far as outreach, uh, you know, we've been to the Braintree Rotary. We, we go where we're invited and, and give talks and, about the registry. Happy to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as some of the social things that we've done, um, you know, the computer seminar, usually we do it in the spring. Check our website. Uh, we, there are some renovations being taken. The building uh, was built in 1903, opened in 1905. So uh, there are some, we're working around some of the building construction. Uh, as far as I got to thank, uh, you know, Braintree Community Access. Uh, you guys do a great job of getting the word out. We had a tremendous success. Uh, in our, our Toys for Tots, pa partnering up with the uh, Marines. Uh, but more importantly, we do an annual food drive. And if you go to our website, we list all the food pantries, because you know what, they need food year round. Right. And we have a, um, a, a trip scheduled to the Braintree Food Pantry to drop some of the food off. And I, I'm sure they need food year round. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, we might do it during the holidays, but uh, you know, at the registry, we do the annual food drive. But, mm -hmm. but and, and it was great that Braintree Cable got, it gets the word out, That's awesome. uh, get the word out. They need it all year round. Mm -hmm. Uh, spring will be here, notwithstanding the shoveling we're doing right now. So uh, we have a Suits for Success pro program. We collect suits. We're drop-off suits. And when I say suits, it can be uh, uh, female, men. We have scarves. We have pocketbooks. We, 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 it's like filings basements. Uh, of course, I, I always say that, and I'm always dating myself. Um, and what do we do with those clothes? Uh, we've partnered up with uh, Father Bill's Place in Mainspring. Uh, Interfaith Social Services uh, over in Quincy, mm -hmm. uh, and the Veterans Administration uh, in Jamaica Plain. Um, and uh, I be, by the next time, there's another group uh, from uh, Boston, uh, inner city, um, that, that's trying to help people right. stay on the straight path. So um, they had heard about our, our, you know, our Suits for Success program. So believe me, um, the clothes that uh, you 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 uh, you know need to get rid of, they will be put to good use. Perfect. And uh, that's our, our, been our Suits for Success program. Mm -hmm. And we have another program, the, uh, the new uh, the Furniture uh, Bank mm -hmm. program. Uh, they're out of Medfield well, uh, off, uh, Warehouse in Walpole, Walpole if you got to drop right. off heavy duty things, things we take for granted that mm -hmm. people don't have. Mm -hmm. um, it's a referral based, uh, there's social agencies that refer people to this group mm -hmm. and they get beds, they get bureaus. At the registry we collect pots and pans and things sure. we can fit. We, sure. we can't take the big items but gotcha. again uh, it ties into real estate. Everything's on the website. On the website. Perfect. Excellent, sir. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. Hey, we've been talking with Bill O'Donnell, the Norfolk County Register of Deeds, and you've been watching Good Deeds. Until next time, I'm Keith Erickson.